Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and implications of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. While new variants of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic make the headlines, heart disease and cancer remain the top causes of death, and the mortality rates of all three maladies rise sharply with advanced age. Let's see what steps we've taken against aging in November. We'll start things off by announcing that a new round of funding for Gitcoin grants is underway, and this time there's a longevity-specific category that features numerous projects from Lifespan.io, as well as our friends and collaborators. To tell you a bit more about that, here's Brent Nally from the latest episode of Lifespan News. Gitcoin is a platform dedicated to supporting and growing the open-source software that will likely serve as the foundation of Web3. The Gitcoin crypto platform launched in 2017 to foster collaboration on open source initiatives by incentivizing developers to take on projects with payments and grants. Gitcoin focuses on funding public goods projects intended to benefit everyone. What really sets Gitcoin apart is their use of quadratic funding, which Gitcoin describes as the mathematically optimal way to fund public goods in a democratic community. Essentially, a matching pool of funds is raised and then a crowdfund campaign is matched according to the quadratic funding algorithm. The algorithm weighs the number of contributors more than the amount funded, which rewards the projects with the most community support. This elevates the power of smaller contributors and creates a sense of camaraderie between them and the larger contributors. According to Ethereum co-founder and noted longevity mega supporter Vitalik Buterin, quote, Gitcoin grants quadratic funding is not just for funds allocation. It's also a grant signaling tool. For the last few rounds, Gitcoin.co forward slash grants has led me to discover a lot of really cool Ethereum projects I previously did not know about, end quote. You can learn more about quadratic funding and explore a calculator to see how it works at the website WTFisQF.com. Gitcoin Grants Round 12 is full of new experiments as we collectively seek to test out the various ideas and mechanisms that will eventually build the future of the internet. Round 12 features three different cause rounds focused on climate, advocacy, and longevity. There's currently 21 projects, called grants, seeking funding within the longevity category which have been curated by the VitaDAO community, which also includes Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation or Lifespan.io President Keith Comito. Many of these longevity grants are affiliated with our work at LEAF or are projects of our friends and collaborators. For example, you can support Lifespan Advocacy video content by funding the Life Noggin Project, a YouTube channel which reaches millions of people with educational videos. We have Lifespan News Life Noggin collaborations planned for the future, so dollars in this category support our work as well. Or you can support Lifespan.io's transition from Web 2, which we've built our success on, to Web 3, which will take our life extension advocacy and research to a whole new level, including blockchain-facilitated crowdfunding of decentralized human clinical trials. This will be a game changer. Another project is focused on stopping Alzheimer's with light and sound and is led by Lifespan.io's Dr. Oliver Medvedek. This project aims to crowdsource the development of promising safe and non-pharmacological therapies for Alzheimer's, bypassing the slow and costly clinical trials associated with drug-based models to get meaningful results in the hands of the public as fast as possible. You can also help fund the creation of Tim Maupin's longevity-focused feature film, The Last Generation to Die, because as David Sinclair says in his book Lifespan, quote, nothing begins with science, it all begins with stories, end quote. I've funded Tim's film with $10,000 to show my support, while others have also helped fund Tim's film with multiple people contributing $1,000 or more already. And full disclosure, I'm even more involved in another Gitcoin project called Longevity Plan, where I serve as co-founder and CEO. 
Longevity Plan's mission is to show you the value of a longer and healthier lifespan and to help you get there. You can go to longevityplan.com to learn more. It's important that we all work to grow and fund the longevity community because it will ultimately benefit all of humanity. We're excited to see the growth of Web3 and the potential of decentralized blockchain-enabled innovations in these important areas, and we look forward to continuing to work with the Gitcoin community to expand the longevity movement. All of our Gitcoin longevity projects are still in development, and we'll have much more to share about them soon. So please make sure that you're subscribed so you can be among the first to find out about the latest details. I'm Brent Nally with Lifespan News. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next episode. You can find the projects at gitcoin.co forward slash grants. That's G-I-T-C-O-I-N dot C-O forward slash grants. Remember, your support unlocks matching funds and helps us continue our advocacy and research work. Now for our research roundup. We have a number of stories this month dealing with Alzheimer's disease. First, a team of researchers publishing in the Nature publication Molecular Psychiatry has described how a newly discovered interaction of amyloid beta is being used in the development of both a treatment and a possible vaccine for Alzheimer's disease. According to the researchers, they identified an antibody in mice that would neutralize the truncated forms of soluble amyloid beta, but would not bind either to normal forms of the protein or to the plaques. They also conducted mouse studies using a humanized variant of the mouse antibody, and the results remained promising. The researchers noted benefits to neuron activity and cognition, but human trials have yet to be conducted. In more Alzheimer's news, a group of researchers have confirmed the neuroprotective effect of blueberry extract and identified a possible mechanism of action that might be useful in targeting the disease. Blueberries have long been on the list of superfoods that supposedly protect our health and may help us live a bit longer. Flavonoids, a class of plant-derived molecules, are thought to be responsible for many of blueberries' protective qualities. Anthocyanins, one of the subtypes of flavonoids, are natural pigments that give many plants their purple, red, or black colors, and they have been reported to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. However, anthocyanins are not easily absorbed within the body. Instead, these benefits may primarily be the result of an acid known as PCA, which is created when gut enzymes metabolize those anthocyanins. As the researchers discovered, PCA treatment in mice reduced cytotoxicity caused by amyloid beta and hippocampal neurons. At high concentrations, PCA restored cell viability almost to a normal level after it had dropped some 40% following amyloid beta administration. The researchers concluded that PCA is largely responsible for blueberry extract's neuroprotective qualities, and that PCA can be used as a new foundation for anti-Alzheimer's drugs. Moving from mice to humans, newly analyzed data from the Alzheimer's Management by Albumin Replacement Trial shows that plasma exchange leads to significant functional and cognitive improvements in patients with less severe Alzheimer's. However, the results were dependent on the dosage of albumin and the disease stage. For instance, only the mild Alzheimer's high dosage group, but not patients with moderate AD, showed significant improvement in language fluency tests and mental processing speed tests. Despite the results being positive, the mechanism of action remains unclear. And last up before we move on from Alzheimer's, a new study appears to have solved the mystery of how amyloid beta a key player in Alzheimer's, forms in brain nerve cells. The data suggests that the sigma-1 receptor may be a therapeutic target for reducing amyloid beta production, specifically in axons. We won't dive too far into this here, because this was the subject of November's Journal Club. Find the full, nearly two-hour video on our Facebook page. Now we move on to some studies on rapamycin. Rapamycin needs no introduction in the longevity community. This molecule was discovered in 1972 in a sample of soil from Easter Island, where it was produced by a type of local bacteria. Rapamycin emerged as a potential immunosuppressant and, as such, has been used for decades to dampen immune response in recipients of organ transplants. More recently, rapamycin was approved as a treatment for several types of cancer. In the 2000s, rapamycin became a poster child of the longevity field, after studies showed that it can significantly increase lifespan in various model organisms, including mice. Rapamycin's main effect involves mTOR, 
a key player in nutrient sensing. However, in a new study, researchers identified STAT3, an oncogenic transcription factor, and its downstream target, CMIC, as two new targets of rapamycin. STAT3 is activated in many cancers and plays a major role in tumor growth via upregulation of anti-apoptotic genes. These genes prevent cells from dying, thus enabling them to proliferate indefinitely and form tumors. CMIC is a key regulator of cellular metabolism and proliferation, and seems to upregulate STAT3 in a positive feedback loop. In this study, the researchers showed that rapamycin prevents STAT3's translocation to the nucleus, where it can affect expression of other genes, by binding to one of its domains that was previously considered undruggable because of its flat surface area. Moreover, in an unrelated process, rapamycin also directly downregulates CMIC. As this work demonstrates, rapamycin is not only one of the most promising molecules in geroscience, but also an anti-cancer drug, and researchers hope this discovery will open new avenues in engaging STAT3 and CMIC. In other work involving rapamycin, researchers have found that hematopoietic stem cells, or HSCs, lose function as they grow larger such as when they enter a state of cell cycle arrest and do not divide. However, rapamycin can alleviate this effect. In the study, irradiated and damaged HSCs that were treated with rapamycin did not demonstrate the growth that damaged but untreated HSCs did. Rapamycin also significantly improved HSC fitness, including their potential for proliferation. And now that we've covered potential benefits of rapamycin, we are excited to announce that we are working with Dr. Brad Stanfield to launch human trials of rapamycin to see if it can slow down aging in a meaningful way. The trial will include low-dose rapamycin combined with exercise to see if there is synergy between the two. We'll be discussing this trial more on an upcoming episode of Lifespan News, so be on the lookout for that to learn more. That's it for our research roundup. There were a ton of great updates on new research that I wanted to cover in this episode, but I just can't fit them all in. So please go to lifespan.io forward slash roundup so that you can find links in the full roundup there. They are worth checking out. Some more videos of our ending age-related diseases conference have been released, including one of Nathan Chang of the On Deck Longevity Biotech Fellowship discussing the history and future of the longevity industry. Here's a bit of that, specifically the parts looking ahead. So let's talk about the future of longevity. Uh, why not? Let's, let's speculate. Um, so, uh, so some things that are pretty obvious, like the, there's been a lot of rumors about seismic funding, about two to three really big initiatives uh, will be announced potentially this year. Uh, I hear in the fall, that's when it's going to be, the first one is going to be announced. There, it's going to be on the scale of billions of dollars per year. So that's really great. Uh, more money uh, will just accelerate things in this in this, uh, this area. Um, okay, more mature sort of assets uh, eventually getting to the clinic. I think that's happening. Definitely some of the more mature senolytic companies are going to get to trial. Uh, the TAME trial, obviously everybody's waiting for that. Um, there's going to be a couple of clinical trial readouts from Unity and BioAge in, in the coming uh, months and year. And then... Um, hopefully we can get our first approval, right? So uh, that would be just incredible and would completely change the paradigm. Uh, I think in general, just uh, different um, modalities like uh, cell and gene therapies playing a bigger role. I think that's just something happening in, in biotech in general. Okay, so roadblocks to progress. Let's just take a look here. What do we need in longevity? Uh, well, I could say, you know, biomarkers, but everybody knows that. Uh, but what I want to, you know, really focus on is that we need more longevity startups. So if you think about just how many uh, longevity startups there are, we have 120, but compare that to like oncology, we have, you know, uh, 3,200, you know, uh, startups active uh, in, in cancer, right? And just, uh, you know, the sh sheer scale of the problem of aging and how it is, you know, a risk factor for cancer and Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease. It it's just obvious that we need more uh, startups, maybe like a, an order of magnitude more in longevity. Okay, but uh, how do we create more longevity startups? Okay, so number one, we can go really, really high up in the pipeline and say, okay, just increase awareness about longevity because not that many people even know that, you know, there are companies developing therapies to, to target aging. So that's number one. So, you know, write about it, tweet about it, volunteer at lifespan.io, you know, make podcasts, make YouTube videos, TikToks, whatever. Um, that, that all helps. And uh, number two, 
um, maybe we can make it easier for people to get involved in longevity startups. So that's what I've been really focused on. And um, so with the On Deck uh, Longevity Biotech Fellowship uh, that, that we're launching, uh, we're really just focused on community, going to find the people who are really passionate about doing something about aging. So that could be uh, a founder, it could be aspiring founders, it could be uh, operators, so you know people looking to join a longevity biotech startup, or it could be investors who want to get deeper into this uh, startup ecosystem. So we're just bringing them all together in this community, and we'll have you know re really awesome, great you know programming throughout the year. Uh, it's remote first, um, you know about two to three hours a, a programming week, uh, a lot of social and networking sort of things. We'll also have some in-person events, uh, you know pending COVID. You can find more videos from the Ending Age-Related Diseases Conference on our Lifespan.io YouTube channel. Also on YouTube, but on the Lifespan News channel, we released episodes discussing if humans could ever use science and technology to mimic some superhero powers, spoiler alert, yes, a potential reversible mechanism of hair loss, new research in which a single injection enabled paralyzed mice to walk again, and Joe Rogan's reaction to it, and much more. You can find these episodes and others like them at youtube.com forward slash lifespan news. One final piece of news before we wrap up, Humanity Plus will be hosting a super longevity holiday party on Saturday, December 18th. This event is primarily virtual, but there's an option of participating in in-person events around the globe, and these various nodes will sync up to connect the gatherings in various locations with a larger event on Zoom. Attendance is free, and you can find out more on the Humanity Plus social media accounts. Make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to stay up to date. I plan to attend, and I hope to see you there. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us, and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Yeah.